Hi everyone! Yes, I am sitting in a slightly different place than usual. There is a reason for that. I filmed the whole of this video and I had begun editing it until I realised there was no sound. I had basically done something wrong when I was setting everything up and yeah, the microphone did not pick up any sound whatsoever and I was too tired to set everything back up with all the lights so I just thought I'm gonna put the camera up I'm gonna put it in a slightly different place so the natural daylight comes through the window and I do not have to set up the ring light and the other light and all of that malarkey and hopefully this time we will record some actual sound so if you watched last week's video, you will know that I recently met up with my friend Matthew. Yay! When you are friends with somebody and you've been friends for a very long time, you tend to have little in-jokes. One of mine and Matthew's little jokes is that I'm a huge fan of Katie Price. If you don't know who Katie Price is, congratulations, your life is better than mine. Katie Price is... I don't even know what she does. Sh she's famous for being famous. She used to be a model, she did a load of reality TV, she puts her name on various products. I'm sure Katie Price does have skills and talents, you know, I just haven't seen any of them. Anyway, when Matthew and I met up in person, he said he had a present for me and it was going to make me laugh. And he gave me this. Yes, my idol, Katie Price, has written a style guide. Now I'm not gonna lie, this has not been my bedtime reading. I have not been tucked up, poring over Katie's words of wisdom. What I have done is skimmed it. And yes, I did laugh, and yes, I don't think I was meant to. You see, Katie begins her book with a moment of self-awareness. I know what some people will be thinking. Katie Price writing a style book? You're having a laugh! But the trouble with this early self-awareness is that it doesn't carry on into the rest of the book. You see, I've got a bit of an issue with style guides in general, and that is why? There's a reason I don't read fashion magazines and yes, I realise I am not a fashion icon. I am not even a particularly pretty person. I know that there will be people watching this who may be huge Katie Price fans who are thinking, oh, she's so much prettier than you. Oh, she looks so much better than you. That's fine. You are entitled to your opinion. I feel comfortable the way I am. I don't understand when style guides are like, you must not wear this. You should wear this. I'm like, no. I'll wear whatever makes me feel comfortable. I'll wear what I like the look of. I don't care about whether I'm trendy or whether I'm particularly in style. If I'm comfortable and I feel confident in what I'm wearing, great. But you know, we're here now. Let's jump in. <laughs> certain things that came out of me reading this book or skimming this book that kept being repeated over and over and over and one of them was money. Moolah, dosh, cash. Katie Price really likes to talk about it. She talks multiple times in this book about how you don't need a celebrity salary to dress stylishly and yet she mentions how rich she is at every opportunity. For example, since those early days in Brighton, my own personal style hasn't really changed that much, except now that I've got money, I can be a little more experimental with my look. For instance, instead of having just one pair of Ugg boots, I can afford to get them in every color and style. And while when I was younger, I'd only have a couple of pairs of jeans, which I'd alternate with different tops, nowadays, I'll hardly ever wear the same thing twice. It's a disconnect between, I have so much money I can buy one of everything, and you don't need a celebrity salary to look great. And it happens over and over and over in this book. 
for example, she talks about shoes and bags and how she loves both. Obviously, she's a princess. And says, sometimes I'll even buy a pair of shoes without realising I already have them. <laughs> when I buy shoes, I like to get the handbag to match, although you'll hardly ever see me wearing them together. I just like the way they look in my wardrobe. And then months and months go past and I realise I've never even used them. That's because she's got money to waste and she is letting you know. How does that help anybody who is turning to this book for style advice? I've got loads of money and I buy loads of stuff and then sometimes just forget I own them and never wear them. <laughs> I'm so well off. She talks a lot in this book about how much stuff she owns and I realise again for some people that is aspirational. People who only wear an outfit once and then never again, they will always justify it by being like, hey I'm in the public eye, I can't afford to be snapped in the same thing over and over, but to me that's so wasteful. We're in a cost of living crisis in this country, I kind of find it gross when you're like, I've got so much stuff and most of it I just never wear. She goes on, God knows how many different coloured watches and pairs of sunglasses I've got. I even choose my diamonds to make sure they coordinate with my look. Don't we all? And the money thing is like, sometimes she's self-aware enough to say, I realise most of you probably don't have the cash for this, but I'm very lucky. I have loads of money. But every now and then she just throws a sentence in like, I recently spent 17 grand on Versace bedding. We get it, you've made a lot of money. Well done, sit down. One of the other repeated themes of this book is slut shaming. She frequently mentions being slutty or looking slutty in a very judgmental way. It's time for another reading. If you want to get laid, go slutty. But I do sometimes look at girls in nightclubs and think, God, what a tart. But then I'll think, Kate, you're wearing the exact same thing. The crucial difference, however, is that I don't ever actually behave like a slut. Dress however you want. Behave however you want, just be safe about it. Honestly, the number of times she uses the word slutty is frightening. If I started seeing a new man, my style would never be overly slutty. What? Define overly slutty! I mean, she literally puts, You might be dressed like a cheap tart, but it doesn't mean you have to act like one. Her book is also full of, like, random advice. And I mean random as in... This is just your opinion being presented as fact. She says she really dislikes all black outfits and how like if she sees a man dressed all in black, she will think he looks dirty and needs a bath. Which I find very weird because I don't tend to think someone looks dirty unless their clothing is stained or they have like loads of gunk under their fingernails or actual grub on them. I just think those are clothes that you're wearing. But yeah, she talks a lot about how all black outfits are a no-no, you need some colour and the irony of her rant about how men in black look really dirty and how she would never wear an all black outfit is that it's accompanied by this. Yes, that's Katie Price and Peter Andre in their matching all black outfits. That is also another place where she has to mention her vast wealth because she talks about how she's got loads of outfits and therefore can mix and match with her partner or her kids really easily. But she does appreciate most families just can't afford to do that. But one of the things that really annoys me, I mean, I was annoyed by the slut shaming. I was annoyed by the whole like, I'm so rich and you're so poor overtone to the whole book. But one of the things that really gets me is the fat shaming in this book, which is off the freaking charts. <laughs> For 
example, at one point she talks about JLo and Beyonce and how she admires that as bigger women they wear outfits that she would never be brave enough to. Bigger women. Bigger women. I mean, they have curves, yes, but have you seen Beyonce? She has a body to die for, and as far as I'm aware, it's not surgically enhanced at all, she's just that blessed. And yet here we have Katie Price referring to her as a bigger woman, who wears really revealing outfits, which is very brave when you're that big. But that's not the only reference to being bigger or basically body shaming other women. It's time for another reading. No disrespect to Pamela Anderson, but she's been wearing a lot of really short stuff recently and I don't think she's actually looked in the mirror to see what her behind looks like. You shouldn't have it all on show when you've got such bad cellulite. I see some women wearing tiny little tops and low cut jeans, but they've got stretch marks all over their bellies. I know there's nothing you can do about scars, but do you really need to show them off? These women probably think people are staring at them because they look hot. Whereas actually, people are thinking, bloody hell, how horrific are those stretch marks? You've got to be realistic. That turns my stomach, I'm not gonna lie. There's a bit later on where she talks about how muffin tops are completely unacceptable and you should wear something different that flatters your body shape if you have a muffin top because it's so unsexy. But then in the same paragraph she talks about how smock tops are also really unsexy and I find if I'm having a bit of a chubby day I will wear a smock because it hides a multitude of sins so what's the answer Katie? What's the answer? Do we slightly bigger women just not go out in public? She uses the phrase there's no excuse for multiple times and one of them is, like I've mentioned, there's no excuse for an overhang. If you have a muffin top, my god, cover it up. However, she also says there's no excuse for bitten nails and I have an issue here because I bit my nails for years as a teen and it was an anxiety thing. I suffered really badly from anxiety and depression in my teens and I would nibble on my nails because it was one of the few things in my life I had any control over. It became something I didn't even know I was doing. I'd just be like... Mm. And there's no advice in her book for how to stop. There's no, if you do that, maybe try this particular polish which tastes disgusting if you put your nails in your mouth or if you do it out of anxiety try some of these calming things instead it's literally just there's no excuse for it it looks disgusting gross stop it and that's another issue i have not just with this book but with style guides on the whole they are so bloody judgmental it is so you're doing it wrong you need to change stop it but overall like i said not just with Katie Price's style book, but with anyone's. I don't like the presentation of what is essentially an opinion as a fact. It's judgmental and it can be harmful. Just flippant little statements presented as fact can be really damaging. For example, everyone looks better with a tan. Well, I certainly do. Pale is definitely not interesting. My best friend is Ginger and that means she's very pale. She's also gorgeous. She doesn't need to be orange. She is perfect the way she is, and so are most pale people. Why do we have to put these judgments on everyone? So yeah, in summary, this book, if you want to laugh, go for it, um, because, you know, it begins with some self-awareness and then quickly descends into none at all. So, you know, that's worthwhile. But mostly, I just don't get style guides. I don't get why you would listen to some random stranger who does not know you and take their advice on what you should be wearing and how you should be doing your hair or your makeup if you wear it. Like, no, you do you. You decide what you feel comfortable in and what you wanna go out wearing. And, you know, the takeaways I have, I have got from this are don't go on about your obscene wealth because I find it really gross. Don't slut shame women for the behaviour they exhibit 
or for the clothes they choose to wear. You particularly should not go on and on and on about how I love wearing my slutty little dress and then go, don't behave like a tart women. You can dress in any way you like and you don't have to be reduced to gross terminology. And you can also behave however you like and you should not be reduced to gross terminology. Let's let people live their lives, shall we? And the final thing I took from it is, you know, let's not fat shame. If somebody wants to wear an outfit, they can go for it. If a woman is wearing a crop top and she has stretch marks on her belly, I don't care because I'm not a judgmental ass. Everybody, and I realize what I'm about to say is exceedingly woke and you know, some people are gonna be like, Ugh. but in my view, everybody is beautiful. Every single person on this planet has something about them that makes them beautiful because we're all human beings. We're all miraculous. I mean, when you think about what the human body is capable of, when you think about the emotions we are capable of having, everyone has their own beauty. And I just don't like being told how you should accentuate it or that this is ugly and this is really nice. So if you do that, you're bad and wrong. But if you do this, that's correct. I want to ask you all, is there a celebrity who gives you a serious case of the ick? Because I, every time I see Katie Price, I have a really visceral reaction. And I realize having just been like, everyone is beautiful. I should probably not then say how this one person is like the object of my loathing. But I just, I can't explain it. It's just every time I see her, I want to erupt into flames with rage. Is there someone who has that effect on you? Let me know in the comments. If you have read a particular style guide that you think, oh, actually it really helped me and it was wonderful, let me know. Uh, if you're a huge Katie Price fan, I'm not gonna have an argument with you in the comments, so I'm sorry to disappoint you. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can click on my floaty head if you would like to subscribe and last week's video is over there. I need to cleanse myself, so I'm gonna go and look at some pictures of Audrey Hepburn because she was a style icon and I will talk to you all next week. Take care everyone. Bye!